All right. So do you still feel like you're running around in circles? Do you still feel like the old ways of thinking, the old ways of viewing the world, the old ways of moving through the matrix has you continually going in circles? So we're going to talk about that again today, okay? This is not something that's just super easy that you just do immediately. So we're going to review this a little bit. My name is Dr. Lisa Brewer. I am a doctor of metaphysics and divinity. So I cannot write you a prescription but I can recommend a good crystal. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about cycles again, okay? So let's talk a little bit today about how we break those cycles a little bit more in depth. So the last time we got together, we were talking about identifying cycles. So I hope you've had some time to begin to identify repetitive things that happen in your life. I'm going to review that just a little bit so that we can kind of catch up. I mean, like in the case of relationships, right? Like maybe, of course, everybody doesn't have the same name, right? But there are some things that are, that happen that are similar or have happened, right? Maybe they're emotionally unavailable. Um, maybe they're like verbally abusive. What, you know, stuff like that, that you just notice over and over and over again to keep happening. That's a cycle, So I want you to write down what types of cycles you're seeing in your relationships. And that can be romantic, family or friends or all three and work. I think we need to talk about that too, right? So what do your interpersonal relationships look like? What are some themes that you continue to see? I want you to write that down, right? Um, What are you seeing financially? What are some cycles that you're seeing financially? What are some cycles you're seeing in your career? What are cycles that you're seeing in just how you view yourself? Does it seem like you get to this point where everything is cool and copacetic and you're so happy and then <gasps> bam, you're right, something happens, right? Or or maybe it's maybe you're finding that like once a month or twice a month or when something specifically happens, it's a trigger. So what makes you angry? Right? What are some pet peeves that you have? What are some, you know, non-negotiators that you have? Or somebody can say something in a certain way. Like sometimes some people can just be suggesting something to me. And then I'm like, what are you talking about? Right? And it's not them. It's me. Right? You you know, I have noticed. I, I don't do it as much as I used to. For sure. But I have noticed that I can get very defensive if someone starts suggesting I do something differently. It depends on how they say it. Um, uh, Like maybe you should structure your business this way or maybe you should, right? And then I'm like, well, why would I do that? You know what I mean? Like, what What were you talking about? And I learned that because that, that that's a cycle I go through because I always had to be on the defensive with my father and defend everything that I did. I will give people like 50 million reasons as to why I'm doing something the way I'm doing it. That goes directly to my childhood and why I do that. That's the next step. I let us right to the next step. So as you're identifying these things, as you're identifying your triggers, as you're identifying all of these things, I want you to really sit there and then I want you to either assign probably a feeling first right? Um, does this make me feel defensive? Does this make me feel less than? Does this make me feel incapable? Does this, um, is, is this like hard for me to set a boundary, right? I don't have a boundary in these relationships. What is the feeling of the result and action that happens? And then I want you to take that. And then I want you to assign it to a chakra. So, The need for me to explain myself over and over and over again. Mm -mm. You know what that's from? That can be related to the throat chakra. I'm not feeling like I'm heard. To, To the solar plexus chakra as well. I don't feel very empowered sometimes to that I've made the right decision. So because I didn't have the power to make the decisions or I was not empowered to make certain decisions about my life, 
then I had to defend my position at every turn. So those are the two chakras really that really were hit hard by that. It wasn't that I couldn't come up with ideas, third eye. Um, it wasn't I felt disconnected to the universe, to God, the crown. Um, maybe some root chakra and perhaps some sacral chakra self-esteem, right? I didn't feel very much like I, I could, right? I felt a little less than. So then when we take all of those and we kind of start working on, we start identifying the chakras that are associated. Oh boy, now the real fun begins. You know why? Because now I want you to go through and I want you to say, oh, wait, I have this, 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 and this that's going on in my sacral chakra. This, 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 and this going on in my root chakra. Finances, root chakra. So all the housing, root chakra, right? If you end up moving a lot or something like that, or you never seem to really be able to get stability, right? Any area, there's no stability, root chakra. So I want you to take all of those and now we, we can see which chakra we, that there's some real work to be done yet. This all goes into breaking the cycle, guys. Okay. You've done a lot of the shadow work. You've dug up like really big roots and we've worked very diff- hard, right? Already to be aligned. Now we want to stay aligned. So as we're continuing to do this work, right? Then we begin to stay aligned. And as we stay aligned, as energy flows through us, then manifestation becomes very easy. But when you can see these areas where there's cycles and there's been blocks, right? Um, then, oh boy, then we can go to those chakras and start to heal those wounds and break the cycle of over and over and over again. I hope that helps. So you got a lot of homework to do. Okay. You got a lot of homework to do. And we're going to talk a little bit more about cycles in the next one and how to start new ones. Well, we'll finish up this one, right? But we're going to continue on the cycle because this is very important because you begin to, you're already beginning to manifest things. You're already seeing little wins. I don't want to kill this, this plant off. I don't want to kill this manifestation off before it gets a chance to really take root. It's really important. All right, gang. So are you identifying those cycles? Can you tell me down below? Which are the main, like maybe two or three chakras that you've noticed, right? That are like recurring themes that we, we need to do some really good work on. Okay. We need to do some healing in those areas. All right. Let's, let's do that. Shall we? All right. So don't forget, like, follow, share, subscribe, whatever it is on the platform you're on. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you guys taking this time and I'm so proud of you. I want you to know I'm proud of you for doing this work. Peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow, and for all eternity. I love you so very much. And never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. Talk to you soon. Bye.